Foxes were first raised on farms for fur in Prince Edward Island in Canada in 1895. Today, roughly 85% of the fur industry pelts come from animals living on factory-like farms. These farms can house thousands of animals and they are all fairly similar in how they operate. Small wire cages, suspended off of the ground in rows, line long barns on typically remote properties which ironically are often surrounded by dense woods and fields, which is a cruel taunt for the animals that are caged. These farms are designed to maximize profit, and that always comes at the expense of the animals. The most commonly farmed fur-bearing animals are mink, followed by fox, each of these species are denied even the most basic of comforts. For example, mink are capable of occupying up to 2,500 acres of wetland in the wild, but are confined to a cage no bigger than 4 feet by 4 feet. Red foxes have complex social lives as they form pairs and can live in family groups. They dig dens that can have many tunnels and can travel up to 6 miles in one day. Cages foxes are kept in on fur farms are typically no larger than 5 feet by 5 feet. Repetitive movements such as circling and pacing, fur chewing, self-injury, and biting injuries are caused by frustration of highly motivated ranging and foraging behaviors and are a sign of extremely poor animal welfare. Other physical or behavioral abnormalities exhibited by animals on fur farms are bent feet, reproductive failure, obesity, and infanticide. The way they live on these farms is just as awful as the way they die, as there are no federal humane slaughter laws in place on fur farms. Smaller species like mink and chinchilla are put in boxes and gassed, oftentimes with exhaust from a truck. Foxes and other larger species are typically electrocuted through their mouth and anus, as this allegedly preserves their fur during the process. The fur industry refuses to condemn even blatantly cruel killing methods such as electrocution. According to the American Veterinary Medical Association, electrocution causes death by cardiac fibrillation, which causes cerebral hypoxia but warns that animals do not lose consciousness for 10 to 30 seconds or more after onset of cardiac fibrillation. In other words, the animals are forced to suffer from a heart attack while they are still conscious. American Veterinary Medical Association AVMA Guidelines on Euthanasia